Shot in 4K Ultra High Definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Tomorrow is a WRL weather alert day, but we'll see thunderstorms this afternoon as well as tomorrow and Sunday. I'll walk you through a stormy weekend. And a storm system heading our way leaves death and destruction behind in Texas. Video of the damage from overnight. And UNC Chapel Hill is stepping up security. We'll explain the change is coming because of a campus shooting last year. And a heartbreaking end to the season for the Carolina Hurricanes. A look at their final game against the New York Rangers. Oh, uh, yeah, they couldn't get it done last night. But listen, they came, they went very far. They got it done. They and did. You know what I mean? I think they have a lot to be proud of. I think so, they should, too. Yeah. All right, we'll get to that coming up. Thanks for joining us. I'm Michelle McConaughey. I'm in for an H2. And I'm Chris Levin. Good in for Jeff Hogan. Let's get over to Elizabeth Gardner right now because you're tracking that severe risk for weather we're going to be seeing tomorrow. And so we do have a, a level two <laughs> risk for a couple of our counties down south. It's Sampson County, most of Cumberland County, and about half of Hope County. And then most of the remainder of the viewing area is in a level one risk for tomorrow, but we will see storms both today, tomorrow and uh, Sunday as well. Here's a look at that uh, a thunderstorm cell that's down to the south right now. That's the one that did a whole lot of damage in uh, Texas that we'll be talking about coming up in just a few minutes. But uh, a good bit of the uh, the middle of the country dealing with storms as well as the Gulf Coast and all that is headed our way for the weekend. We take a look at Futurecast and you can see that sh those uh, showers back to our west. This morning we should see a little bit of sunshine. It's a little cloudy right now, but we'll see some sun on and off. And then by the time we get to the afternoon and evening, we're going to see a wave of showers and storms that come through. Then we're going to see a front moving in across the area. There's lunchtime Saturday. That front uh, later in the afternoon, say three, four, five o'clock, will help to produce some scattered storms. And near that front, you see that stationary front in our southern counties, is where we'd have the better chance for severe storms. Uh, taking a look across our area right now, let's uh, look at White Lake, 68 degrees, excuse me, 70. I did say 68, didn't I? 68 degrees as you're headed out the door this morning. Mid 70s at lunchtime and we'll see highs in the low 80s. We'll talk a bit more about how much rain we're going to see total for the weekend coming up. All right, thanks, Elizabeth. And the storm system that's headed our way, it battered Houston, Texas, where at least four people have died. The city's mayor is asking people to stay home today because of widespread power outages and damage that that storm left behind last night. The storm packed winds of up to 100 miles an hour. It blew out the winds of some high, the windows of some high-rise buildings in Houston. One building even partially collapsed. Nearly a million homes and businesses were left without power after that storm. Active shooter training could soon be required at UNC. It's part of a new emergency action plan after the shooting on campus last August. The new plan also includes upgraded security cameras as well as more frequent and clear alerts during an emergency. The changes come after the shooting that killed a faculty member on campus. Students say new security measures are needed. Well, I feel like we've gotten some experience with like what to do um, in those situations, but it's obviously very different. Like from being on a college campus. UNC only released a summary of the plan. Officials say they will not release the entire report for safety reasons. Work to put the plan fully in place is expected to take about three years. Two people were injured during a shooting in Cumberland County. The sheriff's office says it responded to Charles Court north of Fayetteville. This was just before six o'clock last night. A person who was shot went to the hospital on their own, and that person's injuries are minor, according to authorities. Another person who was hurt refused medical treatment. The sheriff's office did not specify whether that person was shot. No arrest has been made. Caniacs are left to look forward to next season after a heartbreaking loss to end their season. There was a lot to cheer about, though, in last night's Game 6 against the New York Rangers. PNC Arena was rocking when Sebastian Ajo scored midway through the second period to put the Canes up 3-1. But the Rangers, they turned it around and made a comeback in the third period. They scored four times in the period, taking the lead for good with just over four minutes left in the game. A tough end to the night for the Canes, who see their team, who saw their team fall short. And in less than 10 minutes, WRL's Pat Welter and Casey Hintz breaks down what went wrong in game six. And some Cane fans were not at PNC. Caniacs packed bars in downtown Raleigh. You're looking at the scene at the Ale House yesterday. Fans there say they're just happy the Canes had such a great run and they actually are looking forward to next season. 
Well, today we expect an announcement from the state's Agriculture Commission. Commissioner Steve Troxler will officially open the Got to Be and See Festival and talk about the ag's economic impact. The festival is a smaller version of the state fair. Gates will open at noon at the state fair grounds. The annual event showcases North Carolina's top industry of agriculture and agribusiness with ag displays and animal exhibits and tractors. The Food Lion Local Goodness Marketplace will host more than 75 North Carolina food Food and beverage vendors. Admission is free, but you will have to pay for the rides. The festival runs through Sunday. And the Fayetteville Police Foundation is wrapping up National Police Week by honoring those who died in the line of duty. This afternoon, there will be a prayer and wreath laying ceremony. It'll be in front of the Fayetteville Police Department on Hay Street. It all gets started at 1230. New this morning, the House Judiciary and House Oversight Panels both voted to advance contempt of Congress proceedings. These are proceedings against Attorney General Merrick Gardland. Republicans want the Justice Department to turn over audio recordings of special counsel Robert Hur's interview with President Biden. Garland says the president is asserting executive privilege in refusing to hand up the recordings over. Today, thousands of boots will be set up at Fort Liberty to honor fallen service members. The boots will be at Hendrick Stadium as a backdrop to the post's Run, Honor, Remember 5K. This is video from a previous year. Each boot represents a service member who lost their life since 9-11. The 5K itself will take place tomorrow morning at the stadium. No registration is required. It kicks off at 7.30 a.m. A funeral service will be held next week for Raleigh psychiatrist and philanthropist Asai Mimandi. It'll be at Christ Episcopal Church next Thursday at 2 in the afternoon. Mimandi passed away at the age of 89. His name appears on the Mimandi Concert Hall that serves the North Carolina Symphony. He was also granted the state's highest civilian honor for his contributions to the arts in North Carolina. A court has sided with NC State in the latest Poe Hall legal challenge. A group of judges ruled that outside experts cannot enter Poe Hall, at least for now. Earlier this month, a judge told NC State it must allow independent investigators into the building, regardless of a pending appeal. Now, a former NC State graduate student battling cancer and his team of experts will have to wait until an appellate court determines whether or not the judge's ruling was flawed. The last phase of the project to complete 540 is underway. Phase two of the project is a 10-mile stretch. It'll run from Nightdale South through the Auburn community to Garner. Officials broke ground on this part of the extension yesterday. This link has been long in the making, dating back to 2009, you might remember. It will complete the outer 540 loop around the greater Raleigh area. It'll go through Morrisville, Apex, and Holly Springs, and then connect that phase two segment. This portion of the highway is expected to be open by 2028. Backlash is growing over comments by Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker during a recent commencement address how the NFL is responding. And new information about a teenager who died after trying the one chip challenge. Let's we'll take you live out to Clinton this morning. We have storms on the way for the weekend. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner is tracking that for us from the WRL Weather Center. From the WRAL Severe Weather Center, North Carolina's most experienced team of meteorologists. 441. I'm going to start with dual Doppler 5000 radar because there are a couple little uh, tiny showers over here uh, between Franklin County and Wilson County. It's not much, but if you happen to be in that area, you might get, uh, you know, a little bit wet here. A few sprinkles between Zebulon and Lewisburg and then down around Wilson and then heading southward. And that's going to dissipate most likely within an hour or so. And we might see another isolated shower, but our chances for that uh, today are, are pretty slim. Much better chance of thunderstorms mid to late afternoon. We're not under a risk for severe storms today, but we are tomorrow. We have that level two risk in our southern counties. Here's a live look at Chapel Hill this morning. It is quiet out there. We should see a little bit of sunshine when the sun comes up. Walking the dog this morning. Temperatures are pleasant, mainly in the low 60s. We'll see a high this afternoon of 83. All right, thank you, Elizabeth. Authorities say a 14-year-old boy died of a heart attack after participating in the so-called One Chip Challenge. The Massachusetts Chief Medical Examiner's Office confirmed the cause of death. Harris Wallaba had a congenital heart defect. He was participating in Packy's Ultimate Spicy One Chip Challenge back in September. The tortilla chip is seasoned with both the Carolina Reaper pepper and the Naga Viper pepper. The company voluntarily pulled it from shelves after the teenager's death. 
A heads up for tea drinkers, the organic tea brand Yogi is recalling around 900,000 tea bags. According to the FDA, small amounts of pesticides were found on the bags. So far, there has been no reports of any related illnesses. Another U.S. tourist was arrested in Turks and Caicos. This time, it's a woman from Florida accused of illegally carrying ammunition onto the island. Sharita Greer is the fifth U.S. tourist in recent months to be detained there for possession of ammo. Local police say Greer will stay in custody until her next court appearance in July. The U.S. Embassy in the Bahamas says those who violate the law face a minimum of 12 years in prison. The ramp from 540 West to Creedmoor Road was closed for some time yesterday after more than 200 gallons of diesel fuel was spilled onto the road. WRL's breaking news tracker was on the scene. We're told a tractor trailer was leaking diesel fuel. Crews did work to clean it up. The National Football League is condemning controversial comments made about women and the LGBTQ community. These are comments Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker made. Butker made the comments during his commencement address last weekend at Benedictine College in Kansas. He said women are told, quote, diabolical lies about career ambition and should prioritize being homemakers. He also said Pride Month celebrates the, quote, deadly sin sort of pride. A South Carolina canine officer that was stabbed multiple times earlier this week is making a good recovery. The Greenville County Sheriff's Office said Mickey can now take walks with his handler after undergoing surgery. Mickey was hurt on Monday when deputies tried to serve warrants to a suspect. The suspect, James Hopkins, allegedly stabbed that dog three times. Authorities shot Hopkins. He was taken to the hospital with injuries. He is facing multiple charges for that stabbing in addition to drug charges. And Ford is being told the way it's proposing to fix an engine fire risk is not good enough. Ford recalled certain 2022 and 2023 Bronco Sports and 2022 Escapades, or Escapes, I should say, because the fuel injector could leak and cause a fire. The carmaker said they'd update software to detect the leaks, but the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said that didn't go far enough. They say replacing fuel injectors would be safer. Ford said it would work with NHTSA on their concerns. The North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission is cracking down on drunken boating. The agency's on the road on the water don't drink and drive campaign that's happening right now. It's centered around the two busiest summer holiday weekends, Memorial Day and Labor Day. Officers will conduct sobriety checkpoints and raise awareness about drunk driving and boating too. Wake County wants your opinion on the transit investments that you would like to see. The Wake Transit Plan survey is now online. About $700 million is available for transportation projects over the next 10 years. Responses to the survey will help identify community needs and priorities. Today, two organizations are partnering to put on a food drive for local Raleigh residents who need this resource. Thrivent and Raleigh Dream Center are collecting food donations. That's happening from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Raleigh Dream Center on Lewisburg Road. They're looking to collect non-perishable food items and baby formula, wipes, and diapers, too. New this morning, the next Women's World Cup will be played in Brazil. International Soccer's governing body made that decision not too long ago, hours ago, in fact. Brazil beat out a joint bid from Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands. The U.S. and Mexico also had a joint bid to host, but they withdrew it last month. A heartbreaking end to the Carolina hurricane season. The New York Rangers are moving on after a 5-3 win over the Canes in Game 6 of their series last night. WRL's Pat Welter and Casey Hintz join us from PNC Arena to tell us what went wrong. Hey, good morning, everyone. Casey Hintz standing alongside Pat Welter. The Carolina hurricane season comes to an end last night after a 5-3 loss to the New York Rangers. Pat. Everything going right for the Canes through two periods, and that was the key. Sebastian Ajo puts them up 3-1 after two. But then in the third, Chris Kreider comes through with the hat trick for the Rangers. Him and the special teams are the difference. Rangers eliminate Carolina 5-3. We are, you know, it's a special group in there, and, you know, it's, this is going to, you know, it puts a tough way to end a really good year. Best players have to be at their best. Rod Burnmore said it all series. I asked Sebastian Ajo how he graded himself. He said clearly not good enough. Now the most disappointing part about this loss is that there's going to be some changes to this lineup next year with a handful of unrestricted free agents. But we know that as long as Rod Burnmore is here, the culture won't be going anywhere. For Pat Welter, I'm Casey Hintz, WRL Sports, Raleigh.
Mm, tough loss, but fingers crossed for next year. All right, let's get over to meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner. It's kind of quiet as people are waking up, but it's tomorrow and Sunday. Those are the days you're focusing on. Yeah, we are looking at some thunderstorms this afternoon, too, that could be uh, something that affects your plans. We also have a couple of sprinkles out there this morning, too. You can see just an isolated shower there from Lewisburg uh, all the way down through parts of Nash County and Wilson County. It's just a tiny little bit of rain, and it's not likely to last too long. We're looking at the potential for some severe storms for Saturday, but again, we may have some storms this afternoon as well. On Saturday, it's a level one and two risk, so it is a WRL weather alert day. Afternoon and evening would be the biggest timeline, and damaging winds are isolated tornadoes would be the biggest threat. Here's a look at the outline. Uh, most of the uh, central part of the viewing area is in a level one risk. It's just three counties in the south. I take that back. Uh, it is a piece of, uh, of Wayne County, too. So parts of Wayne County, uh, Sampson County, Cumberland County, and Hope County are in that level two risk for tomorrow evening. Uh, damaging winds, heavy rain, hail, and an isolated tornado in that level two risk. Uh, this is another storm that continues to cause problems across, especially the deep south. Uh, we talked earlier in the newscast about uh, all the trouble that we have seen in Texas, and that is all sliding eastward overnight last night. This has been a fast mover, moving across Louisiana and the Gulf Coast with a number of severe thunderstorm warnings and some tornado warnings. Some lightning and thunder from Memphis northward on up toward Indiana, but things have been quiet for us overnight. We take a look at Futurecast, and we can see increasing clouds starting around lunchtime, about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when the showers and thunderstorms begin to develop. There's 7 o'clock, and then after that, we could get a bit of a break and then it looks like we're going to start off on the quiet side Saturday. There's eight, nine o'clock in the morning. Could be a stray sprinkle. We'll pause it there at lunchtime and it's after lunchtime, most likely uh, three, four o'clock in the afternoon that we start to see those thunderstorms popping up again across the area and that continues on until around midnight and then we will rinse and repeat for Sunday as well. We take a live look at Raleigh right now. All is quiet, 68 degrees. We're going to see temperatures in the mid 70s at lunchtime. We do have the tower lit in blue. It is police week and so we are celebrating all that uh, the folks in blue do for us every day. 82 in Raleigh, 81 in Durham, 85 in Fayetteville. It is going to be a warm day today but the dew point sitting at 63 that keeps us at tolerable um, so not so bad. Um, we're going to feel pretty sticky Saturday and Sunday but we see a little bit of a drop in our humidity or our dew point as we get into early next week. Uh, Bimbe Cultural Arts Festival we are proud sponsors of this. Don't forget in the late afternoon and evening we do have that level two risk. This is for Durham. Durham's going to be in that level one risk for severe storms. On Sunday, oh, we need to move that over to Saturday. Um, on Sunday, looking at a high of 70, again, a chance of showers and thunderstorms. We're going to walk through the timeline for Sunday to help you plan around those storms coming up. All right, thanks, Elizabeth. The Durham Police Department is getting more help. We'll introduce you to the department's new therapy dog next. Plus, a rough week for Caitlin Clark as she makes her WNBA debut. A look at her first home game with the Indiana Fever. Coming off that 20 point performance right here, handling the. Today marks 70 years since the Supreme Court ruled to outlaw racial segregation in public schools. President Biden met with family members of the plaintiffs from that historic 1954 Brown versus Board of Education case yesterday. He thanked them for taking a risk and pushing back on Jim Crow. Secretary of Education Miguel Cordona says more action is needed today to ensure schools that serve a majority of black communities have adequate resources and funding. After 88 years, a World War II airman's remains were finally laid to rest in his hometown of New Bern. The family of U.S. Army Air Force Staff Sergeant Robert Ferris Jr. gathered with a large group of veterans to honor him. In 1942, Ferris and seven crewmates were in a B-17 flying fortress when they were shot down by German forces in France. In 2019, three sets of remains were found and analyzed, and one of them was believed to be that of Robert Ferris. What does it mean for me to be here? It's a closing for the family. It's an honor to be here for what they call one of the greatest generations. To finally have his remains brought back home to his family. It means a lot. Such an emotional moment for that community. At a brief ceremony yesterday, Staff Sergeant Robert Ferris was posthumously awarded the Purple Heart. Tomorrow is the first day on the job for Durham Police Department's newest member, Siren the Therapy Dog. The K-9 Responder Academy in Charlotte gave Siren to the department for free through a scholarship. Siren will be assigned to Sergeant Lafferty. She'll work in the department's peer support program, helping first responders cope with trauma and assist victims through comfort and emotional support. Siren was chosen for her warm, calm personality.
Caitlin Clark played her first home game with the Indiana Fever last night. They hosted the New York Liberty in front of a sold out crowd. Clark scored just nine points in the game. Brianna Stewart of the Liberty outshined her though and everyone on the court. She scored 31 points. The Liberty ended up winning the game by a huge lead of 102 to 66. Blake Lively's latest project brings a romantic best-selling novel to the big screen. Here's Rick Damagella with the Hollywood Minute. I want to see you again. Now you see me. You know what I mean. Blake Lively's new romance. The actress finds herself in a love triangle in the drama It Ends With Us. This is your first look at the film based on the best-selling novel of the same name. Find out which man she chooses when it hits theaters August 9th. Walk him down Beale Street Walk him my blues away Bobby Whitlock is Beale Street's latest honoree. The acclaimed musician will receive a brass music note on the Beale Street Walk of Fame in his hometown of Memphis on Sunday, and he explains what the achievement means to him. What it does do, it puts me right there next to Albert King and Sam and Dave and Otis Redding and these great people, Elvis Presley, you know, so it puts me right there. And I'm in good company. That rope is your lifeline. Never let go. Halle Berry's latest thrill ride. The actress plays a mother fighting for survival in Never Let Go. This is a sneak peek at the horror flick, which follows a family who must stay tethered to their home for safety. See how they do when the movie arrives September 27th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Storms that will move into our area this weekend are responsible for at least four deaths in Texas. We'll show you the damage. A new video of the response after a crash involving a bus that killed eight people in Florida. Plus, a key event on the road to Paris. Olympic gold medalists set to compete at this weekend's Hydration Core Classic. 